Like I said, that's why you need this very well to start. Every organization has its own dress code. Like uh, Aruko told us that in the bank, that we are supposed to wear office trousers. So, even like, like Muslims, there are those, uh, those Muslim men who wear and the gentlemen who always wear their Muslim cap. They are, you might find that you don't need to require you to always wear. But there are some organizations where you want to wear work and you don't want to wear. So, the first one varies from one organization to another. That's why it is mandatory, it is the skill for you to carry out research about that organization. Any other questions? Uh, let's take the last example here. Yeah, then we'll close it. My name is Mugara. I'm pursuing the BSc in Economic and Statistics. My question here is uh, in regards to the interview. For some of us who are doing Economic and Statistics, when you go into any interview uh, or a company that asks you several questions, we need to get prepared. Are we going? Uh, are they going to access anything that has to do with calculation, or are they going to access some personal issues for them to take us in? Yeah, I think I got the question. Uh, answering or providing solutions using calculations. So he's asking if he goes for an interview. Are the interviewers going to interview him based on providing answers to their questions in calculations or not? So there's no employer who will employ you without or no interview. No one. Even if no one would be sitting behind a computer and found money and uh, all these businesses and all that, so they will be a point. Yes, that is will have you. But also be ready that any time after you have passed that part, the photos who have passed the written up to the exam uh, interview to come back for one of us. So if you want to want this one to carry out that and take the right skill. Okay, I use money, I use the market is okay, so the way it's outside or the smart might be intelligent on the time you get your heart. Is it that when I do to prove you for someone who is smart and intelligent? Okay, it will be a good one. For a good one, someone who will be a great investor, great investor, so that that I mean. Another question, you discussed about the issue of the decision media. Because the decision media at the moment, as you see, it, you know, a lot of the same actions affect our society, you know. When you look at the world now, the climate change issues of the social media, you know, like the terrorism issues, and even our culture is not the way it was, you know, so that social media actually affects a lot of things here in Africa, especially in our country. If you think that social media is very important to our society to be informed and more than our culture, thank you. Social media has done a lot of advantages and also it has also done a lot of harm to society. Like you're saying, it has really killed our culture. First of all, one of the is socialization. We use as African Africans, all of us used to have a culture of meeting as a group physically and we deliberate on things that are going to develop us. That one has been killed and it has been replaced by social media. So social media, everything in life that you do just know that it has a negative and a positive. So in your, uh, for now we need social media. That's why you see, if you go and carry out your search, you find that every organization has a link on social media. Why? Because the society uh, demands for it. And those are the people they are targeting in their businesses to excel. So organizations need social media, but still it is up to the organization communication specialists to regulate on how people uh, uh, maybe responding to the comments on their page or something. So just to, to answer your question, social media, yes, has killed our culture. But we cannot do without it. We have to do it. You as a person, it, it starts with you. For example, if you have a Facebook page and you go for a beach, a beach party and you think it's your page, just know that once whatever you post on social media, it is public. So when you go for a beach party as students, I know students, you, this is your age where you go to party, you wear just the way you want. You might, if 
Instagram, whatever you post on social media, Twitter, WhatsApp, Google, or Facebook, or Twitter, first scrutinize it and see whether it is appropriate in terms of culture. Uh, does culture accept a girl to uh, try to open all her clothes and post a picture on social media? They will record a video that they are doing something and then put it on social media like WhatsApp. So it is up to us that we need to, like, if you have a sister or you have a brother, it is up to one of us to uh, lecture one another and keep reminding your, your relatives that culture is really important, much as social media is So it's up to you how you use it. But it cannot go, it will never go away. It has to stay, but find a way. Then the other question you asked was uh, the smartness. The smartness, yes. Do you have to be smart or uh, yes? No. In, in, in terms, the interview is looking for your IQ and your reasoning capacity. But and also the papers academically, did you pass? By the that one is also very important. Those of you who have been having tests, just know that also they consider how did you used to perform. Yeah. They see throughout the service, if you used to get that in the 40s, then they say, especially with things to do with the accounts, they will need to be very careful when they are hiring. But on top of that, even if you have passed, but you don't have the etiquette, like you don't have the reasoning capacity, you are not smart enough to present yourself, you came when you are dressed in a skimpy skirt as, as ladies, you came with a cleavage as men, you came with a uh, hey, if you are spending alcohol, they will not hire you. Although, with the experience, there is uh, the accountants are here. That, but that is a conspiracy theory and that is, uh, that we shouldn't accept it. That is stereotype. They say, uh, they say that accountants don't operate so well until they dream. Like, for example, the, the governor we have, the governor of Bank of Uganda, up to now he is still active and he's still in, in that position. But as soon as when you used to meet him, you can say what is this, but they used to say that that is how he operates, that he has to first drink before he, he can do anything. So that is just a habit. For you as students, don't grow that habit and say since they say accountants have to first drink, lawyers have to first do this, no. Don't pay attention to that. Many things people say them just because that is how they feel, but anything can change. So always don't go by what people say. All of us are different, and God created us different. Don't adapt any culture. Whatever happens to the job here, even if it's smoking, even if it's drug, even if it's alcohol, it will affect you when you start working until the end. So this is the right time to avoid them. Just so you know, you must have both of them, both the skill of academics and IQ, those who have presentation skills and smartness and research. Thank you very much. Uh, we might, because of time factor, we might not take uh, a couple of questions. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I have uh, several questions and pregnant. Uh, see the technology actually advanced, and we used to interview people on uh, video conference. Assume someone is in Cuba and you are there, and that person is supposed to. Uh, be okay to attend the interview. How are you going to know or to determine that you need to consider the mode of presence, you know, the, the mode of conduct? Thank you. It's very easy for you. The person comes through and you on the teleprompter, you see whatever on the TV or on the screen or projector, when that person comes through, you know, with that video, it's how you use it. You, the interview person, the panelist, what you do, you need to place a camera where they are seated, like where they are in the waiting room. So how they conduct themselves walking up to the place, you are seeing everything. So you must place a camera where they are and also where they are. You, on TV, I you not know, capable of seeing someone, how they are talking, how you ask them the answer. That process of answers to question and answer session will help, help you the person to see. So, uh, read the other person's uh, etiquette because a person might be seated, but he might sit and put his arms on the other side as if he's in his couch at home. That is not how they're supposed to sit during the interview. So, you are recording the 
you are interviewing him on video, what you are saying is sitting post uh, his eye contact. Even if you are on video, you must also keep eye contact, meaning you must look through the camera. Meaning when you look directly to the camera, you are looking at the people interviewing him on the video. So it's possible. It's very, very possible you can. It is possible for you to be able to, be able to see people and their contacts through the video. Actually, you can even make it, uh, and you don't have to have a short, uh, a half video, you make sure that you have a some moment, moment, you tell them to stand, and as they stand, or even as they go up to come and sit where you are, you are able to see. So it is very, very possible. Yeah. I, I thank you very much, I think that's the end of the questions. Yes, for those that have questions.
So now, they wanted us to send for someone to go home and come and bribe them, and then they can release us. That's what they were doing. I didn't have anybody. I was staying with my dad, my dad had traveled to the village. So, the next morning I'm still the guest of the state, still confined in that place. Now, the opposite was of, of what was happening in the evening, in, in the night, was happening during the day. Relatives were coming and people were being released. And I was the only one who was remaining. So in the afternoon, the spirit of innovation kicked in. Huh? And I started acting like a madman, as if I was going to die. The police were scared. Got me out, sat me beside a tree, ran to the shop and get, got me soda. Get me soda and release me. <laughs> but the, the take out of that story is this. Why would those of us who know where danger is, why would we not share, share our stories with those ones who are going towards the danger? I think that's the biggest biggest challenge in this society today. And that's why this kind of a meeting needs to continue again and again and again. Because we are coming, we are coming from the real world, we see how things are done. And we see what's wrong, what's right, and we can be able to advise you. So, great appreciation to the guys. I was called by this Mr. Tiberius, very unique name, I've never heard a that name apart from the Bible. <laughs> Very unique name, very unique individual, and the organization of this place, let's just give them a hand for organizing this day. We have got to continue, we have got to keep on going. So, my name is Azora Namale, I come from Kenya. I was born in 1979, and I know some people are growing and saying, oh, it's going to be a long story, I'm going to cut it short. Um, I never had, is it the privilege or the opportunity? I never had the privilege or the opportunity of born of going to university. Up to the time I'm speaking right now, I do not have that document called a university degree. <laughs> it is not a sin, by the way. <laughs> Moses in the Bible did not have a university degree. Muhammad did not have a university degree. Bill Gates doesn't have a university degree. Steve Jobs when he was dying did not have a university degree. Jesus did not have a university degree. <laughs> But they met ripples in their world. So how come I'm in this place? How come I'm in this place without a degree? What happened? What happened, Lawrence? I told you I was born a long time ago. During our days, we just said we used to have five public universities in Kenya. Only five public universities. No private university. Only five public universities. So people who graduate by the drug, people who graduate from high school by their drops. Hundreds of thousands of people. Which means for you to go to the university, you had to be a very smart guy like me. <laughs> the entry into the university started from something called a C class. But the tricky thing was the combination. I know you guys know about all that. If you score physics, mathematics, and so on, combination, what course are you going to take? And I ended up with a B minus, which is good. If they would have given me one more year, I would have ended up with an A plus. But I'm kidding. So I never had that privilege to go to the university because of that combination thing. And I decided, what is my passion? My passion has always been in talking, speaking, words, writing. I'm an author. I've written a book called "Time Your Setbacks Into Major Comebacks." You go to Amazon.com, you can find it there. I have a blog called life-signatures.com and also a blog called ideatv.ug. Find everything that I talk about in that place. So I never had the privilege of going to the university because of that stuff. Another thing was the family orientation. I come from a relatively poor family. Just here, two hours from Busia, a place called Kakamega. That's where I come from. There, all of my life, I walked around barefoot, fetching water from a well. My dad lost his job from the Ministry of Education, from actually from Mumia Sugar Company as a manager when I was young. So the job of raising the five of us 
was on my mom. And the other day was celebrated Mom's Day. And I want you guys to put your hands together for mothers right now. One man in a vicinity where everybody doesn't care about kids, secondary school education, single-handedly one man took five kids to high school. Two of them, in fact, three of them into university. But for me, why me anyway? Now, <laughs> one man. I ended up, long story short, because I saw an advert those days, I was a hungry man to study. Up to today, I am the most hungry gatherer of information. And if you are going to make it in life, ladies and gentlemen, we can bring speakers here, and speakers come, and speakers go. One thing that I would like you to note, if you are going to make it in life, must be a relentless learner. Learning does not stop here at university. I have knowledge that is worth more than a PhD. It's just that I don't have the paper. <laughs> Why is that? I learn daily, consistently. I devour information. I watch TED talks. I write. I read, I research. One of the biggest disadvantages of a degree is that you think that when you have it, now you need it. Learning has stopped. That is one of the biggest disadvantages of a degree. One of my mentors is called Peter Daniels. He says, I never had the misfortune of going to university. He has his own reasons. You must have the habit of perpetually learning. Even when you're out of university, they normally, when you're graduating, I hear, I normally see graduation ceremonies. They close up some of graduation ceremony if watching it on TV. They normally say, we give you the what? Huh? Come on. You people, you're going to graduate, aren't you? What, what do you normally say? Come on. What do you normally say? We are giving you the powers to go and, oh, come on. You've never watched a graduation ceremony and some of you are going to graduate? Come on, what's wrong with you people? Honestly. Huh? What are you doing in school? What are you doing in this university? <laughs> Honestly, what are you doing here? Have you ever asked yourself? What are you doing? Kenyans normally say, we're not doing it here, but we're not doing it here. We give you the powers to go and study pertaining the degree which you acquire today. They send you out there to study. They don't send you out to look for jobs. Anyway, so I ended up in a, an institution called the Kenya Institute. Uh, Kenya, what? <laughs> Lord, I'm not. KSMS, what is it? Kenya School of Monetary Studies, actually set up by the Central Bank of Kenya. And one of the courses that I took there was Information Management Information Technology. And I ended up there because I didn't have career guidance. Now that I was someone who loved words, I thought information, just the word information caught my attention. I applied, reaching to the last man, we're being taught about microcomputer systems and software engineering and all that stuff. I said, oh, well, let's do this. And another thing that you should go home with is this. Once you found out what is before you, do it to the full capacity of it. Otherwise, you let it go home. If you're doing PR here, do it. Don't leave anything untouched. No stone untouched. That's exactly what I did. If you go to the library, you find Lawrence studying, and there was a pile of books. Reference upon reference upon reference upon reference. Guys will come and look at the phenomenon of Lawrence studying in the library. Because why? That was my opportunity.
opportunity. I missed the opportunity to go to university. So my opportunity is here. I'm going to turn it inside and outside. That's exactly what I did. My first job came as a result of a recommendation. And number three, if you're writing, I've talked about learning. I talk about what did what, what, what I was say? Doing it to the fullest. And number three, networks. At nearly 70% of the chances you're going to have in achievement in anything you do, it is going to become as a result of someone else recommending you. Don't think you're going to come before a, an interview panel with papers and think that's going to be enough. Some of your friends in here, treat them well. Treat them well. Treat them well. These guys have people who have organizations. They can recommend you. And, and I'm going to come up with a social media, I'm coming up with a social media channel just on that idea alone. One recommendation can take you places. If, if my dad trusts me and he has a corporation and I will say, my friend, what's your name again? My friend Alice, she's so good in what she does. I think she can make a very great PR assistant in this place. He will not even want to interview her. Why? Because I've recommended her. Don't take your friends in here for granted. They are going to recommend you later on in life. So start building meaningful networks here. I think you want me to talk about peer pressure. I don't want to talk about that. You are grown-ups. Don't want to talk about peer pressure to you guys. Why should I talk about peer pressure to you guys? How old are you? If you don't mean that talk, grow up. You don't need peer pressure talks. So I'm not going to handle that. Anyway, so, be careful about the guys that you are studying with in school. My first job was as a result of a recommendation. Because this guy will, will see me and he will see me studying and he knew you, he, he thought I was a genius. And he was right. Anyway. And so he went and he recommended me. My first ever job was an IT instructor. Those days we did not have phones. The computer world had just arrived. Many people are being told to go and study information technology so that they can, be, they can be relevant. And I became an IT consultant and an IT instructor. I poured my, that's the number two that I say, I poured my heart into that job, I'm telling you. I poured my heart into that job. And while I was at school, I poured my heart into one particular course, which was database management. How many guys are doing database management here? I love that course. I love it. And uh, I, I used the, 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 you know the minimum software that I was exposed to? <laughs> I don't know what God put in women, honestly. It's a revolution. When we become of age as men, man, you make us go crazy. Women. <laughs> Songs have been written, empires have been built, Others are falling down all because of <laughs> It's a revolution. Now, when the world discovered the telephone call, huh? Alexander Graham Bell, is it him? Yes. Uh -huh. Do you know who, 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 uh, the name of his girlfriend? What's her name? Huh? She was called Hello. <laughs> Mm -hmm. She was called Hello. <laughs> That's why you guys are big. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> and then the world discovered the printing press. Long before the printing press, people used to write with scrolls, you know, put ink and so on. And I'm told those guys used to, who used to transcribe the Bible. They will write it, and when they come to the name God, they will go and shower to be righteous and clean. And then they come and write God, and then they continue. But the printing press, one Bible like that, another book like that, and so on and so forth. Right now, you can create a book, like I can create a book right now, and someone in Europe can have it printed and copy tomorrow. How do you do that? 
technology, Amazon.com. How many people here are on Amazon.com? None. <laughs> Why? I don't know. And then the world created the internet. The internet, people were doing IT here. How did the internet come about? Experiment. Do you think they said, now let's sit down and create an internet? Mm -hmm. They were testing. I don't know, ARPANET, NFS, NFZ, NET, whatever it is. They came together. Universities came together and formed a network, and the modern internet was born. A revolution happened when I was alive in 2000, 3000 there, actually in Africa. A big revolution. Now, my question to you today is social media itself is a revolution on the internet. You guys who are in IT, you know these things called, and now I know some IT guys are highly, maybe it's a tough question. <laughs> you know that thing called one-to-one? -one? See, I told you they're highly. <laughs> one to many, yes. and many to many. Yes. The phone call, hello, Alexander Graham Bell was one-to-one. -one. one person communicating at a time. The TV was one-to many people. The internet. Is many guys everywhere communicating. So social media, the, the, the easiest thing I can explain social media, I come from the Luya community in Kenya. These guys love sending greetings. So they will go to a radio studio, a radio station, sorry, all the way to make a travel 70 kilometers to buy a greeting card and write greeting cards and, and write the names of the people they want to be greeted on the air. And they rush home. Immediately after lunch of the news, listening to readings, social media. What are you going to do with social media? You. What are you going to do? Some of you shamelessly are not on Facebook. Some of you say shamelessly are not even on Twitter, not even on LinkedIn, not even on Instagram. And you are in a university. The other day I checked, Cavendish University has 200 tweets. When did Cavendish University start? 200 tweets! 200, 200 tweets. 200 tweets! A university! What's going on here? You need buy? What's up? What are you going to do with your social media? So, social media is when you adapt, my, my mentor is called Mad Man. He says the biggest difference between dinosaurs and cockroaches is adaptation. You have a cockroach today, you do not have a dinosaur today. Why? Cockroaches adapted. By the way, that, that cockroach thing is true. How many people have microwaves at home? I want you to go and experiment. Open the microwave, put in a cockroach, heat it up. Ten minutes, open the door. That thing will just walk out. Hello, what's up? <laughs> Adaptation. <laughs> what are you going to do with social media? Let's go. So social media is a communication tool that enables people to interact with each other by both sharing and consuming information. Interacting with each other. That is the key word. So just press it. One thing about social media is this. Let's go one by one. One thing about social media is this it's community. Part of a mighty community. Another one is interaction. People talking with one another. Another one is sharing. Sharing information, sharing photos. If I tell you the stories of how we used to do photos in our day, you guys were born the other day. We will go and take, we will post, you know, with our government and so on and so forth. We will take a photo. And then, you will wait. Because this guy has gone to, I don't know what town, to develop the photos. In fact, he will check in two weeks. Before you can get a photo. That's why this thing is a revolution. Right now, someone has already snapped my photo and the media have shared it online already. And someone in the UK has already downloaded that photo. Powerful stuff. 
powerful stuff. The other day, someone reached me from France. They wanted to find out information about, about uh, uh, mobile money. How? They went on to LinkedIn and they just put a keyword for mobile money in Uganda. I popped up. If I wasn't there, how would I pop up? If I wasn't on LinkedIn, how many people are on LinkedIn and give you a sweet? Yeah. Come for a sweet sometime next year. And there was people to socialize. And there was people to network. And I've told you one key thing you should go out of this place with is networking. Some of you are into groups that don't help you at all. Huh? All you do as a group is go to Kabalagala to drink. And then you come here wasted. And you think you've arrived. You haven't arrived. What you've done is just diluted your brains. I'm going to tell you just the way it is. A cigarette, I'm just going to say it, is a roll of tobacco with fire on one end and a fool on the other. That's what it is. So you have groups of guys who are just smoking, you know, drinking. And you think you're going to make it in life. You're wasting your own self. So get networks. Get people who can build you up. Right now you go to Buganda Road. Many people are sitting, discussing. What are they discussing? Two homo sapiens fell in love. And they want to get married. Huh? And their budget is 90 million. And these other homo sapiens will actually raise up 90 million successfully. You will never hear a hundred group of homo sapiens trying to raise capital for a business venture. Never. Just weddings. And a wedding lasts, you know how long it lasts? One, one minute. You take her, I do. You take him, I do. People scatter. The network is dismantled. You never hear people coming together and, and I challenge you guys from this university, start it. Start coming together and asking yourself big questions. What can we create in this space? Those of you who are into arts, what can we do with our arts? How can we make it better? Those of you who are in communication, how can we make it even better? Stop looking for jobs. Questions are answers. Start asking those questions why they are in your networks. Now when you go to social media, the networks are even worldwide. I'll show you. You go to Twitter right now, just now. Write one keyword in Twitter in, in any area of your passion. You'll find many guys willing to freely share information and connect with you on that issue. Yes. And some of you are not in Twitter. Oh, this for, for bazoos. Please. Wake up. Smell the coffee. We network, and then it's user generated content. In our days, content was only found in newspapers and TVs. And we will sit and wait for those guys. The other day, an earthquake happened in China. And when the earthquake was happening in China some years back, information was being shared online. BBC found out there is an earthquake in China from Twitter. A news channel. Some of you are not on Twitter. Oh, it's for, I don't know who. So let's move on. So now, there are very many social media categories. Some of you think social media is Facebook. Huh? WhatsApp. Huh? Twitter. Instagram. Viber. <laughs> Viber. Let's go to the categories right now. There is business and career. Yes, let's go slowly by slowly, one by one. Let me ask you a question. What social media channel houses the area of business and career? Let me see. Who knows? 
Yes. LinkedIn. Right? Is that what you say? Give him a clap. Now, how many people here want to develop a career? So, why are you not on LinkedIn? Why are you not on LinkedIn? Huh? You're, you're on LinkedIn? Uh -huh. Who else is on LinkedIn? Imagine. Let's just go there now, right now, right here. This is a university. And these are guys who are doing degrees. And these are guys who are sitting here who are wanting to find how can I develop myself? How can I do a good interview? You want to do anything? Why? You're waiting for Moses to come back. <laughs> Why are you not doing anything? Just ask you, write that question down on that piece of paper. Some of you are taking notes. Why am I not on LinkedIn? <laughs> write it down and answer it. Why not on LinkedIn? Do you even know what LinkedIn is? Just go to LinkedIn.com. Come on. By the time I'm through, you should be on LinkedIn. Don't, don't you have bundles? The school provides bundles, right? Yeah, fast bundles, fast internet, get on LinkedIn, that's an order. Say yes sir. Let's go. Reviews and ratings. Who knows about this? Huh? An example of reviews and ratings as a channel? Okay, this one, I have to excuse you because it's not even in Africa so far. It's a channel called Yelp. Yelp. Y-E-L-P. Y-E-L-P. Yelp. It's for reviews. What it does is that it collects relevant information and reviews them. So that when you want to access the information, it's already reviewed. You don't need to spend a lot of time on the internet for it. Okay, let's move on. Social curation. You know what social curation that is? That is just like, it's just like uh, Yelp. However, these guys are into news and into uh, titles, things that are common to people. An example there is what they call Reddit. Flipboard. Have you seen Flipboard? Yes. Have you seen uh, 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 Pinterest? Huh? You know seen Pinterest? Have you seen it? Oh, come on, it's there! Can I spell for you? P-I-N-T-E-R-E-S-T -E -E Pinterest Check it out, it's, it's very nice. Now, let's go on. Number four. Video. Ah, this one you should know it. Let me see. YouTube. Ah, uh -huh. clap for him. So if you're into PR, if you're into communication, and you don't even have a YouTube account, shame on you. How do you get YouTube? By the way, let me show you. How do you get YouTube? How do you sign into YouTube? If you have a Gmail account, you can easily set up a YouTube account. What do you do with YouTube? You see videos. You see? What else? You upload. You upload. Yeah. So if we have someone who is into videography and so on and so forth, you can create small clips. You brand yourself. You upload those again and again. You get a name. Let's continue. Content and documents. If you wanted documents on any information, start the content. You go to script it. You know script it? S C Those guys who are doing graduate diploma will come to me for advice. I mean they will see what I'm doing and they'll like, hey you guy, what's going on here? Huh? What's going on? And I'll, I'll, I'll probably show them. So they have a graduate diploma and they don't know how to do these things. And I have a high diploma and I know how to do these things. What is the purpose of 
for that paper, that graduation paper, without the knowledge and the passion. Why should you have it? Why should you go around showing us that I'm speaking passionately because I've done interviews in Kenya, in Uganda, and in Ghana. This is the most frustrating thing ever to interview guys like you. You sit in an interview, someone has spent 17 years in school. Ask them, tell us about yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so gay. I have a diploma, a, a degree in management information systems. I am here for a job. One, two, three, four, five, six seconds. You summarize your life in 16 years. It's the most frustrating thing. Most frustrating thing. Because people do not put themselves into it. You guys, most people are just looking to pass an exam. Huh? Pass an exam, don't, take a, don't have a mistake, a receipt. I had it written even in my own, you know, geniusness. I had receipts. So I ended up in that organization because that guy thought I was a genius and he recommended me. And when I turned Microsoft Access inside and outside, it was one of my forte. So, long story short, in that organization, I got tired. That's what's going to happen to most of you. If you're not doing something you're passionate about, you're going to get tired. Going to work at 7 a.m. so that you can get on, leaving the house at 6, I don't know, 5, so that you can get to your office at 7, so that you can be set up, then leaving the office at 8. Monday to Friday, Saturday half day. Why are you going to do that kind of a lifestyle? If most of you, I don't know, you've been talking about go oh, interview, uh, CV. <laughs> I want to laugh. Why should your focus be on making a CV to people? What's your, what's your problem? <laughs> Why are you putting a lot of focus on CV? And even though CVs, we have templates on the internet. Beautiful templates on the internet that someone can use. But you find someone coming to your interview room with a CV. I don't know, I don't know how to say it. Some guys are even crossed and written on ink on the CV. Someone sent me a CV uh, a, 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 a scan, a PDF scan, and it was upside down. So, what? I mean, how do I read this guy? You don't need education for that kind of a thing. Common sense. Thoroughness. Just be thorough. That's all you need. I got tired with that job. I walked out. I walked out because I went for another interview. An IT firm. They were recruiting. And I thought I performed very well in the interview. So, in that, in that encouragement, I walked out. Glory to God, I was going to have a good job. Said bye to those guys. And I even thought that I saved enough money to sustain me. I was shocked. The job didn't come, and I didn't have money. Spent, I don't know how long, over time, in the cold out there. Hmm? To such an extent that, you know, in Kenya we have things called SQ. You know what SQ is? Is there a Kenyan in here? What is SQ? Servant supporters. Which means that someone has a big house and they rent out the servant supporters. So I was paying, I was living in a servant supporter those days. And I did have rent. The landlord needs to come and pester me for I want my money, we have to pay electricity and so on and so forth. And he would feel sorry for me, he would bring me food. You know? However, however, this is where the story now changes. A friend of mine, a mentor actually, a spiritual mentor, had uh, was working in this organization where they were starting a new idea 
this idea has revolutionized the world. And they had outsourced that function of trade development into another outside organization. So this organization had its own standards. And one of the standards, guess what was? We don't employ people without we don't employ people without a degree. But given that my friend, my spiritual mentor was the project manager in this project called M-Pesa. You heard of and you, you sing around. It was just an idea then. He thought, Lawrence, instead of sitting home, doing nothing, why don't you go and see what those guys are doing? I've recommended you. They have an, an IT position, given that they had an IT background. I went there dressed in a suit and so on and so forth and got there and I was given an interview. I can tell you that after going through what I had gone through in life, I couldn't care less. I was so carefree. Most of the people who come into interviews, they put on masks. Some of you, you spend hours and end reading about how to present yourself in an interview. So you find someone coming to them, shaking you artificially, smiling, the smile is not even there, it's putting on a mask. <laughs> I want to take you anyway. So, I was so myself, I was so carefree, I answered all his questions, and I know if he give me the, he gives me the job he does, if he doesn't, they gave me the job, not because I had a degree, they gave me the job because of the recommendation. They were taking a gamble on me. That's why some organizations will take gambles on some of you. So you have to be careful what you're doing right now. They took a gamble with them. I was, we had big data analysts. Two of them had degrees. One of them, which was me, had a higher diploma in management information systems. But dude, I was so hungry. I was so joyous. I was so thorough in everything that I did. And soon enough, like I said, those days the computer world was not so much developed. I went to the boss and I told the boss, listen, we can network these organizations so that everyone has a computer and we can even work better. And I told the boss, this is the budget, this is how much is needed. That's number four for you. Be someone who sees opportunities for growth for organizations. Don't just, you know, this is my job description, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do this, you do it, after five years, you're off. Bring something to the table. I was, every moment in time, someone's phone is on. Let's tell my boss, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Suddenly, I became a threat, and that's what's going to happen to you people. There are some zombies who are sitting in offices doing nothing. When they see you rising, they get scared. And some of them are managers over you. So this manager goes and cooks information about Lawrence. Lawrence does this, Lawrence does that, Lawrence is rude. I remember that one very carefully. Why was I being told rude? Because this boss will be sitting in her office playing solitaire. You guys will come from far. Do you know solitaire? Yes. Will come from far. So those are the games we used to play. So she will play solitaire and so on and so forth. And she will dedicate whatever is supposed to be her job to me. And I didn't know how to do it. And I would say, please, show me. She would say, no, I can't. She'll figure it out. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. If you can't show me, I can do it. Go into trouble. When Kenya was having that uh, post-election violence, that stuff, that year I remember going to the office and I encountered the boss. The boss said, Lawrence, I came to fire you this year. I don't know what has stopped me, but I came to fire you because of the reports I've heard about you. And so this is what we're going to do. From now on, you're going to be on half salary, indefinitely. But you're going to do the 
the work that someone else was doing. Now, this someone else used to leave office at 12 midnight. See, we were launching a new project and some, some things needed a lot of work. We were launching it at 12 midnight. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Then it goes to work on Sunday. So you could see the joy in the manager's face because she knew this dude. 12 midnight, Monday to Sunday, shone on her eternal soul. I sat down and looked at the activities this man was doing. Thank God for technology. Thank God for technology. In two days, I revolutionized what he was doing. Guess what I used? Can you guess what I used? Microsoft Access. The thing that I was sweating all years ago. Imagine. And I just added a bit of QuickBooks. Who knows QuickBooks here? Yeah? If you're in your accounting and you don't know QuickBooks, you need to go home. <laughs> I took those two things together. Guess what? I was able to generate a report in minutes, minutes, that this guy was generating in hours, in fact, in days. Revolutionized everything. I would be that, like the call center because people from Safari will call, people from the field will call, and I have three phones here. And, 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 uh, and uh, the phone was connected on auto answer. Someone calls a number from Mandela. I go on my phone, on my, on my laptop, Microsoft Access, Google their name, and so on and so forth. Okay, what do you want? The information is up there, I read for them. People from Safari come house, they call. What do you want? On real time answers that will be taking days. Microsoft Access, not Oracle, Microsoft Access, people. Imagine. So don't take for granted whatever course it is that you're doing. If you just put lean into it, you can be able to answer questions with it. Before long, Safari Home House was calling for Lawrence. They wanted Lawrence to go to be stationed at Safari Home House. Does Lawrence have a degree? No. no. That degree of yours <laughs> today is as common as table salt. <laughs> that is the fact. That is the fact. That is the fact. How many people are graduating from this university alone today or to over this year? How about other universities? Now we have the East African Federation. Now we've added even many private universities. How many people are graduating every day with a degree? And you think you can show up with a CV and a degree paper and get a job? You need to start thinking about opportunities, not just jobs. Jobs are not there. Hiya. I'm telling you. They're not there. You see, the president has not retired. That's just an example. <laughs> Microsoft Access. That is technology for you. That is one thing I got from technology and it's taken to places. Microsoft Access. So what happened? MTA in Uganda says, hey, there's something cooking in this neighboring country because they saw a video on CNN about sending money on a mobile phone from one person to another in Kenya. And they were like, we gotta do this. So they drove all the way, they flew, I think they flew to Kenya. And they wanted to, not to reinvent the wheel, they wanted to, um, they wanted to learn how to do this thing. And so what happened is that Safaricom told them, we have the technology, but the implementation or the tech development of this MPESA product is with these guys. Go to these guys and talk to them. Now, they go to my organization and they talk, I don't know what's going on at that moment in time. I have no clue, no idea. I'm just busy with my Microsoft Access and my QuickBooks, answering calls and clicking things. 
things happen and happy about it. By the way, the guy who was doing that stuff was given my responsibilities. They swapped. Guess what happened? He still left job at 12. I was living one at five. PM on that note. Why? Because I have a social life. I was part of a drama group and I wanted to go and act. Huh? Empty comes and they say go to this. Long story short, they decide why don't we why don't the organization decide why don't we take some consultants to Uganda? 2007, I think, 2008 there. Yeah. Why don't you take some consultants to Uganda to help MTN Uganda come up with this? So, day of reckoning for the books. Huh? Opportunity has just come. Does the boss have the capacity to take it? Looks around the organization. The organization has over 200 people. And in the pecking order, if they were to take order, in the pecking order I was number about 70 something. Looks around the whole organization. Whom can we find together with this guy to go to Uganda? Takes weeks. The guy on Microsoft Access and QuickBooks is still working, has no idea his name is being mentioned there. So I end up in Uganda. 2008. As an expatriate, as a consultant, wow. without So what do we learn? What is the moral of the story? Can someone tell me the moral of the story? Yes, sir. Hmm? Someone to be educated. Education. Another moral of the story. It's about passion. It's about passion. Ah, the word. It's about passion. Ladies, if you are dating a man and he's not even passionate about us no, go out of <laughs> I'm telling you, he's dead. Passion. Passion on anything. Some lady was passionate about planting trees of all the things. I'm telling you, planting trees. Who does that? As in waking up in the morning to plant trees. Again and again and again. Later on, she became the Nobel Peace Prize winner. Do you know her name? Yeah. Who is, what's her name? Kwangari yeah. Madai. What made her? A degree? What made her win that Nobel Peace Prize? A degree? No. Passion! So how many guys in this place are passionate? What are you passionate about? Is it a technology? Yes. Is it a technology? Yes. 
Yes. Is it a dispensation? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Let's go. Social media is none of those stuff. Yeah. Huh? It is a revolution. Yes. That's what social media is. <laughs> God decided, hey, hold on, hold on. God decided, let's create the heavens and the earth and let's put man in it. And for those of you who believe that you came from a monkey, that's why you're behaving the way you're behaving. You came from God. Moving on swiftly. He, he, he made the earth, he made the heavens. And then he made man, Adam, in his image. But the revolution came <laughs> when he made a woman. <laughs> Since then, the world has never recovered. <laughs> I don't know what God put in women, honestly. It's a revolution. When we become of age as men, man, you make us go crazy. Women. <laughs> Songs have been written, empires have been built, others have fallen down all because of. It's a revolution. Now, when the world discovered the telephone call, huh? Alexander Graham Bell, is it him? Yes. Uh -huh. Do you know who, 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 uh, the name of his girlfriend? What's her name? Huh? She was called Hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. She was called Hello. <laughs> That's why you guys are big. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> and then the world discovered the printing press. Long before the printing press, people used to write with scrolls, you know, put ink and so on. And I'm told those guys used to go to transcribe the Bible. They will write it, and when they come to the name God, they will go and shower to be righteous and clean, and then they come and write to God, and then they continue. But the printing press, one Bible like that, another book like that, and so on and so forth. Right now, you can create a book, like I can create a book right now, and someone in Europe can have it printed hard copy tomorrow. How do you do that? Technology, Amazon.com. How many people here are on Amazon.com? None. Why? I don't know. And then the world created the internet. The internet. People were doing my idea. How did the internet come about? Experiment. Do you think they said, now let's sit down and create an internet? <laughs> they were testing. I don't know, ARPANET, NFS, NFZ, NET, whatever it is. They came together. Universities came together and formed a network and the modern internet was born. A revolution happened when I was alive in 2000, 3000 there, actually in Africa. A big revolution. Now, my question to you today is, social media itself is a revolution on the internet. You guys who are in IT, you know these things called, and now I know some IT guys are highly made this a tough question. <laughs> you know that thing called one-to-one? -one? See, I told you they are highly. One to many, yes. and many to many. The phone call, hello, Alexander Graham Bell was one to one. One person communicating at a time. The TV was one to many people. The internet is many guys everywhere communicating. So social media, the, the, the easiest thing I can explain social media, I come from the New Year community in Kenya. These guys love sending greetings. So they will go to a radio studio, a radio station, sorry, all the way to make a travel 70 kilometers to buy a greeting card and write greeting cards and, and write the names of the people they want to be greeted on air. And they rush home immediately after lunch of the news, listening to greetings. Social media. What are you going to do with social media? You. What are you going to do? Some of you shamelessly are not on Facebook. Some of you say shamelessly are not even on Twitter, not even on LinkedIn. 
not even on Instagram. And you are in a university. The other day I checked, Cavendish University has 200 tweets. When did Cavendish University start? 200 tweets! 200, 200 tweets. 200 tweets! A university! What's going on here? Meaning in by? What's up? What are you gonna do with your social media? So social media is when you adapt. My, my mentor is called Mad Money. He says the biggest difference between dinosaurs and cockroaches is adaptation. You have a cockroach today, you do not have a dinosaur today. Why? Cockroaches adapted. By the way, that, that cockroach team is true. How many people have microwaves at home? I want you to go and experiment. Open the microwave, put in a cockroach, heat it up. Ten minutes, open the door. That thing will just walk out. Hello, what's up? <laughs> Adaptation. What are you going to do with social media? Let's go. So social media is a communication tool that enables people to interact with each other by both sharing and consuming information. Interacting with each other. That is the key word. So just press it. One thing about social media is this. Let's go one by one. One thing about social media is this, it's community. Part of a mighty community. Another one is interaction. People talking with one with another. Another one is sharing. Sharing information, sharing photos. If I tell you the stories of how we used to do photos in our day, you guys were born the other day. We will go and take, we will post, you know, with our government and so on and so forth. We will take a photo. And then, you will wait. Because this guy has gone to, I don't know what town, to gather up the photos. In fact, he will check in two weeks. Before you can get a photo. That's why this thing is a revolution. Right now, someone has already snapped my photo and the media have shared it online already. And someone in the UK has already downloaded that photo. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. The other day, someone reached me from France. They wanted to find out information about, about uh, uh, more money. How? They went on to LinkedIn and they just put a keyword for more money in Uganda. I popped up. If I wasn't there, how would it have popped up? If I wasn't on LinkedIn, how many people are on LinkedIn and give your sweets? Yeah, come for us with some time next year. And there was people to socialize. And there was people to network. And I've told you one key thing you should go out of this place with is networking. Some of you are into groups that don't help you at all. Huh? All you do as a group is go to Kabalagala to drink. And then you come here wasted. And you think you've arrived. You haven't arrived. What you've done is just diluted your brains. I'm going to tell you just the way it is. A cigarette, I'm just going to say it, is a roll of tobacco with fire on one end and a fool on the other. That's what it is. So you have groups of guys who are just smoking, you know, drinking. And you think you're going to make it in life. You're wasting your own self. So get networks. Get people who can build you up. Right now you go to Buganda Road. Many people are sitting, discussing. What are they discussing? The two homo sapiens fell in love. And they want to get married. Huh? And their budget is 90 million. And these other homo sapiens will actually raise up 90 million successfully. You will never hear a hundred group of homo sapiens trying to raise capital for a business venture. Never. Just weddings. And a wedding, you know how long it lasts? 
one, one thing to do. You take her, I do. If you take him, I do. Finish! <laughs> People scatter! The network is dismantled. You never hear people coming together and, and I challenge you guys from this university, start it. Start coming together and asking yourself big questions. What can we create in this space? Those of you who are into arts, what can we do with our arts? How can we make it better? Those of you who are in communication, how can we make it even better? Stop looking for jobs. Questions are answers. Start asking those questions why they are in your networks. Now when you go to social media, the networks are even wide wide. I'll show you. You go to Twitter right now, just now. Write one keyword in Twitter in, in any area of your passion. You'll find many guys willing to freely share information and connect with you on that issue. Yes. And some of you are not in Twitter. Oh, this for, for bazoos. Please. Wake up. And smell the coffee. We network, and then it's user generated content. In our days, content was only found in newspapers and TVs. And we will sit and wait for those guys. The other day, an earthquake happened in China. <coughs> and when the earthquake was happening in China some years back, information was being shared online. BBC found out have a strategy. Have a strategy. If you don't have bundles, write those things down in Microsoft Word or somewhere. So when you get to where there's bundles, you tweet all that stuff. You are building your page on social media. That's how you do it. Okay. Let's end. There are two guiding principles that I want you to uh, apply. And apply them not just on social media, but apply them in life. Number one is momentum. Number two is consistency. Consistency builds momentum. Those guys who did physics, you know about it, isn't it? Momentum is a force that only an outside force can act upon it. It doesn't act upon it, it continues. And what makes it continue is the consistency. If you see you're going to tweet every single day five tweets, do it. Do the calculations, by the way. If you did five tweets daily, seven days a week, how many tweets are those in one week? At my Huh? 35. How many are there in one month? One party? Huh? 140. 140 tweets in one month. So it can tell you what Cavendish University is doing. They have tweeted in two months. Isn't it? Because then it's how many? 260. 277. 277, that's what they have tweeted. Do they have a strategy? You ask them. Those guys who are tweeting, do they have a tweeting strategy? Maybe they do one tweet in a week. I don't know. Maybe that's their strategy. But you see where it's going. So, 140 times 12, if you did it faithfully, what's, what's that? It's more than 1,000 tweets. So that gives you credibility, isn't it? When you stand before someone and they see your Twitter account has a thousand tweets on an area that you're passionate about, you are an authority in that area. Making sense, isn't it? That is how we use social media. And I know I was told to come and talk about negative social media and so on and so forth. You guys are adults. I don't need to tell you, don't post pornographic images there. Do you need a speaker to come and tell you that? Uh, do you need a speaker to come and tell you porn is bad? How many of you say porn is good? Let me see by show of hands. See? You already know. So anyway. Let's move on. Downwards. Let's go. Time wasting. If you don't have a Twitter strategy, you end up with